So let me ask you a question then. So is there like an optimum size that you should be when you sell a business, right? What's the difference between sort of selling your SaaS business when it has a million dollars in ARR versus say five or 10 or 15 or 20? What, what's different? Because again, we're going to have lots of people listening to this whose businesses are at different sizes and are thinking about an exit. What, what changes as the business grows in terms of size for, for an exit? Yeah. So the, the nuanced answer is, I think that it depends on what your goals are when you want to sell and why you're selling your business. But there are characteristics that buyers will be attracted to at different levels. And so there are several different types of buyers that you will most likely encounter and the folks that I speak with all the time. Typically, people put these into two buckets, financial buyers, financial institutions. And you might call that the private equity. The folks that we talked with, which were a more of a holding company model, and then strategic, which has some sort of synergy or competitive nature. Um, there's a, another reason beyond just your financials that they're looking to buy your business. So those are the broad uh, kind of two buckets that things usually fall into. Uh, when it comes to the size of the business, uh, businesses can be any size when a strategic acquirer is interested in it, because a lot of times it's more about the technology. It's more about um, the market and what's happening there. And that's why they're approaching you. Now, if it's a financial one, that's probably actually more of, of the decision or, or more of the answering your question here, where there are different tiers that you're going to see different types of buyers. And so within those financial buyers, you have individuals. Individuals are folks that are, you know, probably previous SaaS operators or folks who have worked at um, large SaaS operations and they're looking to operate. You know, they have come from, they, their unique set of skills are in sales or marketing, or they have paired up with somebody who's very technical. And so it's usually a pairing or um, some sort of partnership that allows them to acquire businesses in the usually sub, you know, 1 million in ARR range. And so individuals are the most common buyers that you will see under 1 million ARR. Those folks will usually use a mix of their own personal capital. Sometimes they will raise from friends and family, but it's not an institutional uh, financial type of transaction where it's been committed capital and they're looking to make investments. It's, hey, this fits uh, the type of business I feel I can run. And um, I'm going to use a, a blend of my own money, friends and family, um, oftentimes an SBA loan, which is very common here in the, uh, in the States, small business loan, and to, to purchase those businesses. Over a million in ARR is where you start to become a lot more attractive to holding companies. Um, I call them holding companies, but they're essentially just businesses that are looking to operate several SaaS businesses and oftentimes sharing resources across the portfolio because that will help them reduce the, the expenses and therefore the, the cash flow of the business. And so oftentimes it's kind of around that million dollar mark that you become a lot more appealing to those types of buyers. And then as you approach two, three, four, five billion and onwards, you're going to be much more of a target for a private equity um, institution that is looking to buy the business, grow it over the next three to five years and sell it. And so those are typically what we see. Str strategic buyers as well um, often have thresholds that they're looking to, you know, in terms of size. Um, but some of that is not just the amount of money that the business ma is making, but what does the team look like? Because um, a lot of times there, it, it could be an acquire type of thing. And very similar to private equity, where they're looking to buy not just the technology and cash flow, but oftentimes uh, having the team stay on as a part of that next transition to grow the business and then sell again in three to five years. So that's kind of what the landscape looks like from the, call it the micro SaaS up to um, the, the top of the, the SaaS uh, kind of world where those are the most buyer, those are the most likely buyers you're going to run into at those stages. That's a great overview. Thank you. And what's interesting as well is, is, is timing for this, right? It sounds like there's, there's timing thresholds that kind of suit because 
the classic thing you often hear from founders is, yeah, the exit's in, I want to do an exit in three to five years. And that, you know, the answer to that question changes every year. They're always looking, it's always three to five years out, this exit, right? This fabled exit. 